Good evening to everybody. This is Michelle Benjamin from the People of Purpose Talk Show. And tonight we're with Dr. Barbara Dallapetze and we're talking about clarity of mind. And Barbara, I hand over to you to describe our video that we have on screen right now. Hi everyone and welcome. Thank you, Michelle, for having me again. This video, I took it this morning. I am in a gorgeous place a retreat where I'm writing at the moment, my new book. It is on the Garda Lake and it is stunning. If you ever visit Italy and you want to find a stunning place, please do go to uh, Garda Lake. It is wonderful. It is wonderful. There are horses here. There is nature, olive trees, uh, quiet and calm atmosphere and a lot of clarity that you can get about your life. <laughs> so I thought it was a good uh, video to share with Michelle and Michelle, you thought of sharing it with your audience. So thank you thank for you. that. Thank you, Barbara. That's very kind of you. So, um, okay, let's share that. And hi, hi, Barbara, welcome. Welcome to the People of Purpose talk show. And uh, thank you for sharing with us that beautiful video. I have another video of Table Mountain, just to uh, welcome everybody to South Africa, uh, my part of the world. And here we go. And this is my country beautiful South Africa and that's the top of Table Mountain and that's Cape Town. Well, there you go. What can I say, Barbara? Wow, that's stunning. That is really beautiful. Definitely a place to visit, Michelle. And there you go. There's our, our South African uh, plant kingdom. It's the only plant kingdom in the world. We have it. Uh, it's the only floral, floral kingdom in the world and we have it in, on Table Mountain. So, I hope everybody enjoyed that. And Barbara, tonight we're discussing clarity of mind. Let me adjust the screen. Okay, here we are. So Barbara, do you want to take it from here like you normally do and just bring in the topic and then we'll go into sure. the question and question. Sure, sure, Great. thank you. I hand over to you. Thank you, Michelle. And uh, I, love again the topic we're going to address tonight clarity of mind and actually when i started for the first time to think about clarity of mind was when i actually lost it <laughs> and imagine it was a few months after my husband um, told me that he wanted to leave the marriage and that was an out of the blue um, event for me i didn't expect it and so a few months later, he needed, he still was saying that he needed time to go through what was going on with him and to try to understand what it was about and how to move forward. And a dear friend of mine, one of the radical friends uh, I speak about in my book, one day calls me and she says, Barbara, her name is Amelia. Let's call her Amelia tonight. Barbara, uh, I am sending you an article and I want you to read it. I was surprised because usually Amelia doesn't, doesn't call me to tell me these things, but I said, okay, send me the article and I will read it. So she sends me the article. I look at my inbox, uh, click on the article and start reading it. It is an article that speaks about fashion and it is an interview and the journalist is interviewing a lady. And this lady is talking about the new trends in fashion, what she bought, her new wardrobe, and halfway through the article, I stop because I'm not a fashionist really. And I, yes, I liked the article, but I was not much into it. So I stopped reading it and I was wondering why Emilia asked me to read that. And so I left it there. A couple of hours later, Emilia calls me and she says, have you read the article? And I said, I started it, but then I left it there because, uh, and I said, why did you ask me to read it? And she said, go ahead, read it till the end. She wouldn't tell me why she wanted me to read it. 
So because I trust Amelia and I know that she, if, she, if she says something, there is meaning to it. There is something important behind. So I picked up the article again and I continued reading. And here it comes the last question that the journalist asked to this lady. And he asks her, what do you like to do in your free time? And that's when my world completely changed and my heart stopped. She said, I love to go back home after work and have a glass of wine with my partner. And she mentioned the name of my husband. And I like when we have time to drive around. And she describes in few lines what she likes to do with my then husband. I was shocked. Of course, I didn't expect it. I called Amelia, who said, have you read it? And I said, yes. And I said, is he him? And she said, he's him. I couldn't believe it. And so I picked up the phone and called my still then, by then my husband that was taking his time to go through his crisis. And I told him, I said, I read this article. Is that true? And his response was, I'm sorry that you had to find out like that. Yes, that's me. And that was the moment when the clarity I've had for my life, my past years about who I was, who, what my life was about, to where I was going, completely disappeared. Fogginess, confusion, lack of clarity. That's what happened. And that's what became of the clarity I had. So in that very moment, I started longing for clarity because then I started to understand and I, I started to look for um, clarity about what was going on. I looked at my life, I looked at my life with my husband and my life as it was, and I couldn't find any sense in it. And so everything was, uh, was foggy, really foggy. And uh, the values I had, what I believed in, everything seems to have crashed and there was nothing there. And so when I, from that moment on, apart from dealing with the pain, when I was trying to imagine my life and trying to make sense of my life, uh, there was no clarity. Literally, I couldn't understand my direction. I couldn't understand who I was. I couldn't understand the what I needed to move forward. And that's that period was the period that made me uh, investigate and ask questions about what does it mean to have clarity? And is clarity something that I am responsible for? Because till that moment, to me, clarity was a given. Yes, you do need to understand a few things, but fundamentally, who you are, where you're going, what your life is about is clear not from that moment. From that moment, clarity became a conquest. Clarity, I discovered, is a state of being that I can choose, that I need to cultivate, and that I can treasure, and I can take actions and make choices that actually allow me, my life, and what I do to become clear. And so I discovered that Clarity has to do with a transparency, transparency about uh, what are my values, what are my beliefs, what is my world about, what do I want my world to be about, who am I, transparency about who am I, what do I stand for, is a transparency about uh, the direction and the outcome I want to achieve with my life. All of these has to do with clarity. And so from that experience, from that experience, my journey to discover and become clear bit by bit, step by step about these layers that I was and that my life was. And so I started asking, so who do I want to be? Because what I was before simply disappeared. It was destroyed because it was based on values, beliefs that I had, yes, that I never, though consciously and intentionally chose, 
I was born in those values. I was born in those beliefs that they were also part of my culture, but I never consciously chose them. When this fogginess started, I realized that there is something a fundamental dimension that upon which my life and I am built that I can choose what it is about. And it is made of thoughts, beliefs, values, experiences, everything that I can choose and that I need to be aware that I can choose. And so that's the my journey started, my journey to find clarity. So who am I? What quality of thoughts do I have? What are my emotions? What is my emotional home? What are those emotions that I want to characterize me? Before the event, when I thought I had clarity, I was an, a person very joyful, positive. Uh, I was an entrepreneur. I, I, I had an entrepreneurial spirit. Uh, and, and what about now? Do I still identify myself with that joyful person, positive person, entrepreneurial person? Or do I want to live also in a different space, in a different emotional space? So I started to look at the two worlds and actually the, the, the fogginess that was the transition after the event and throughout the event of my divorce, the fogginess was actually my opportunity to realize that the clarity and the life that was clear for me and the direction that was clear for me before was actually an unexamined life. I was an unexamined self. And when I say an unexamined life and an unexamined self, I mean at a level of depth, at a depth where usually we don't look. Because for me before everything was clear, but with this event, I realized that there is a deeper level of clarity, which is the one I am talking about, which has to do with our inner state. And that's also why I call it inner transparency. Being conscious about what I stand for, what I believe in, where, I, where I'm going and why I am going there. What is my purpose? Before, when I was in my relationship with my husband, I thought that for me, for example, as a woman, having a family, having kids, and build a community around my family. That, that was my purpose together with having my professional, having my work, but it was that kind of world. And that was my why, my purpose. After my life unfolded in a completely different way, I realized that that purpose that I inherited from the cultural space I was brought up in, from the family I was brought up in, that purpose, can change and actually life put me in a situation where I needed to change my purpose and I needed to find clarity about it. Now it was the time to start thinking and choosing clarity. And when I say thinking and choosing clarity, I mean that really I needed to put some effort, a lot of effort actually to disentangle my beliefs and my emotions and the experience that I did in the past, the choices that I did or did not do. And to get that clarity, start to little by little become conscious of choices I was making. What do I want to believe? What do I want to feel? What do I want my life to look like? What do I want my future to be like? What are the kind of people that I want to have in my life? So the, this, the distinction that I learned between having clarity before the traumatic event and finding clarity afterwards, the distinction and the clarity around it was I have a choice. I am always in a position to choose and I want to learn to consciously choose at all levels. And that was how I started my journey of finding clarity. 
And uh, the first step was actually understanding and consciously own the world and the identity and the purpose that I had and that I had inhabited before the traumatic event. Because that was the first level of clarity that I had. First step of finding clarity, understanding and owning my story, my identity, my purpose. The one I think I had then, and that I did have, but that was not exhaustive of everything. After the traumatic event happened, I had a chance to move towards a new kind of clarity. That is the first step that I just described. And the second step to find clarity is imagining and choosing my own story, myself, the purpose that I want to inhabit and that I want to live and nurture now. And on that step, it is a deeper level of clarity, a more profound level of clarity that gives me a different view, a different openness to what is coming. And it is linked to intention, intention of understanding and intention of choosing. Whereas the majority of us um, usually usually wake up only when we have traumatic events as it happened with me. I thought that everything was clear before that, that I had clarity around everything. When the traumatic events happen, a new world opened up and I needed to find a way to navigate that world and therefore cre being very clear of what elements were part, which elements that were part of that new world. And there was a lot of questioning, a lot of um, research it from the inside out in order to recreate and rebuild, but this time a world, an identity and a purpose that was my own as much as possible. And in fact, the, the, thanks to this work, which is clarity as a state of being and therefore clarity um, you, is earned through a process of discovery. Hmm? Being in this state of being that is clarity and thanks to this process, I could build and I continue to build my world, my identity and my future in a new way, in a more conscious way, more intentional and, and conscious uh, with respect to what I want to believe in and not because I belong to a culture, not because I have a certain past, a certain story, history. I can choose right now what I want to believe in, who I want to be. And I know that the choice is what brings clarity. Thank you, Barbara. That was, that was beautiful. As always, you explain it in the most amazing way. And I think also because it's so personal to you, because you've been through uh, the trauma you know, and uh, look, I think every one of us in some way or the other, we experience trauma in life and it unsettles you and it, it, it places uncertainty over your circumstances. And, um, and to think that that is the point of clarity, I, that, that is actually a mind-blowing human concept. <laughs> because it's mind blowing because you know when everything is aligned or so you think it's aligned in your life you actually sometimes miss what's right in front of you Absolutely. and sometimes in a process of loss or the fear of it or the possibility of it if you're facing that it just starts bringing the clarity of what matters to you most. Yeah. And uh, I think I hear that when, when you just explained um, why you included uh, that as part of your seven steps as well. I know that was one of the questions I was going to ask you. And yes. 
fantastic, Barbara. And I think it, that it's a personal experience for you. You're talking from mm. your heart, your own journey. And I do think that you have the potential to help many people today who will tune in. You know, um, Michelle, one thing that maybe I did not emphasize, emphasize enough mm -hmm. is that clarity makes you feel good because uh, um, I know that the title is Finding Clarity and in my book it is Finding Clarity of Mind but actually what clarity brings is peace because it does give you visibility somehow. It, you can see forward somehow and when you go through the trauma as it was for me I couldn't see it that's why I said foggy it was everything was foggy and therefore when there is a fog it, you go you you can move forward very slowly because it is dangerous and so I longed for clarity of mind for a direction my thought could move to toward so that I could move smoother in my life and without the clarity there was suffering in me there was fear there was the unknown there and that's why it becomes clarity is so important for our health and well-being because it makes us feel better it gives us a sense of relief it gives us a sense of somehow serenity that we are going where we know we are going Right, where whereas when traumatic events happen, like has been the, the 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 pandemic for the past two years for many people, it was a traumatic event that I described for me, and so there are many other events. These events take away clarity, in the sense of where we are going. But that's a bit of clarity. That is part of the big family of being clear. And so what I never realized, and I think that the majority of people don't realize either, as you pointed out, is that clarity actually clarity brings well-being brings peace and so it is something that we want to um, intentionally pursue having more clarity about ourselves our world our situation even if we think that everything is aligned everything is working um, there is no more clarity to find mm -hmm. I think that we always want to keep in mind that we have blind spots, that they are in the dark. <laughs> and so they need some light there and we need to bring clarity to that. And then our well-being, our sense of feeling better, have feeling good expands. Does it make sense? It does, because you know, this thing about feeling aligned, uh, you know, the human condition is such nothing is aligned <laughs> nothing <laughs> you know, nothing we have to find mm -hmm. we have to find what works for us and we have to create alignment and that's how much power human beings have and that is why if we misuse that power we lose the clarity of vision and then we start destroying the world right so yeah. my own understanding of it is you know the various aspects of human life uh, for instance, I love to talk about family first, because I believe, you know, organizations are exact, well, they actually, uh, thousands of families all grouped in another kind of group, but families are attached to whatever the organization may be, because each person represents a family. So it all starts with the family. And when yeah. you talk about clarity of mind, uh, you know, in my list of questions uh, to you, one of the questions I had, uh, you know, I, I tabled out for you was, how can clarity of mind help for better family relationships? You know, mother, father, husband, wife, yeah. brother, sister, niece, nephew, granny, grandfather, you know, yeah. the most basic yeah. family setup. So how yeah. can it help there? Because my own understanding is like you found it through your trauma and you're, you're very blessed because I know your story because I have read your book. So I know who the radical friends were and I know about the family and how they gathered around you. When someone loses their clarity of mind through trauma, 
However, the trauma manifests in life. Trauma manifests in many ways in a human mm-hmm. life. Mm-hmm. How can family, just by relaying your own story, because I'm taking you back to your book, how can family play a role to heal other family members rather yeah. than break them down further? Because some people actually enjoy other people's trauma. It's a place yeah. of causing more hurt. You know, yeah. it's not even a niggle anymore. I'll push a stick where it hurts most because yeah. you're like that. And, and you know, we've got everything aligned. And, and how do we heal that in the world? Because that's my huge um, discomfort right now. I'm seeing this happening a lot. And I have been speaking recently a lot about family bullying and bullying in schools and that kind of thing. But I think we have bullies in society because a lot of families have bullies and nobody talks about it. It could be the slightest kind of bullying. Uh, Barbara, for instance, if I like to drive a Toyota, but you like to drive um, a Maserati, let's go there, you know, and you look down on my Toyota. So every time we're gathering for family lunch, I feel inferior at at the table. Because Mm -hmm. you're the driver of a Maserati and I'm the driver of a Toyota. So Mm -hmm. the thing is already silent bullying is causing some kind of stress at the family dinner. But people are eating together. And does not that allow us to lose our clarity, our heart, our joy, our peace, both for the oppressor and the oppressed? So I I, Mm -hmm. I ask you to take it from there. (laughs) <laughs> yes, well, absolutely. You, you, you say it. When we are in this, in this in, especially in families, because we, we, we have intimate relationship, we are very close emotionally. And so that's when relationships hurt the most, right? And that's when the power of hurting resides the most. And so clarity, clarity helps. And when I say back to the first part of your question, right? Clarity of mind and how the family can help there. Clarity of mind. When I say clarity of mind, it is not. It is clarity of mind because the mind helps us understand and navigate situations. But it is clarity of, of thoughts. It is clarity about emotions. It is clarity about relationship and this dynamics between relationships. It is clarity about the world I inhabit, the environment I'm part of. So it is, it's a complex uh, world, the world of clarity, right? So this is first of all, so how does, does the family help? The family helps when I have lost my clarity and therefore I don't see the intersections anymore. It is as if really I don't see intersections. So I need to move slow into my life. The family just sheds some light into my path when I need it. That is a healthy way to help somebody that goes through trauma and that doesn't know how to move. You don't want to substitute to the person, but you want to be gentle and just shed some light on the path. That is how you can support until the fog dissipates, until the, there is a little bit more view and vision in front of what's, uh, of what's had for the person, right? And that is difficult because a family, family suffers when a member, usually family suffers when a member is suffering, right? And, and witnessing the pain of others is never easy. So it is a process of growth that a person regain its clarity and that the family supports because the temptation is always to put, be in a position of judgment and be a judge. You see, it is not happening to me, it's happening to you. So clearly maybe something wrong, something happened, you did something wrong. So I have, don't have this situation and I can speak to you in a judgmental way, not because I want to hurt you. Maybe I don't even realize it, but uh, this happens, and it happened to me a lot of a lot of time, right? So this is a, 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 again an opportunity of, for growth and uh, helping with the with finding clarity. Back to the question: Is there for for family members to be very delicate and gentle in the way you relate with people that go through trauma and they are suffering, and just walk next to them, not before them or behind them, but next to them. This is what I would say first. And then clarity, how clarity plays a role, for example, in bullying. 
Well, uh, bullying, I'm, I'm not an expert in bullying, but among the many things that, I, that can be said, what I would like to point out is this. A person that bullies somebody else often has been bullied. He or she has been bullied. And there is a lot of uh, unconscious and unknowing and shadow and not seeing in the person that bullies you. There is a lot of lack of clarity about myself, lack of clarity about how I can, for example, ask for what I need. If I am bullying somebody, probably I suffered and I'm angry inside. And that is a corner of darkness that I don't see. And that's where you need to find clarity. That's where you need to find light. And so in dynamics where you express anger or or are you are accusing or you are mean towards somebody else is because you do need something for yourself and you do not know where to find it how to find it you you're not clear about what is going on within yourself you don't you're not clear about who can help you what can i do do i even need to be help does it exist in the world that somebody can help me with this so there is a lack of clarity around all of that. And there is a lack of clarity around the world. Uh, if, if we extend this concept, right? It is a, a lack of clarity around the world I'm in, the people I'm with, what I need, who I am. So when there are situations in families or among friends or among acquaintances that are of conflict, and there are of the nature I've described, Michelle, I, I think that clarity does play a role. And I would first of all say that it is clarity about my needs that I don't have. What do I need? What do I need? And where can I find what I need? How can I fulfill my needs instead of bullying you, instead of being aggressive towards you? That's lack of clarity. But I cannot know if I don't know. You, we can know. We cannot know what we cannot know, what, what we don't know. So that's also another um, arena where others become important because they can show us or just uh, poke us and say, look, maybe you can search this way. You can find in that, you can talk to that person. And that, that becomes a link to clarity on the path. And it puts you on the path to clarity. So definitely, and, and again, I didn't realize that clarity was something to be to be concerned about or something to, to search for, to want. I always thought that it was there, the enough clarity to move ahead. When it was taken away from me, I realized that there is a world and it is so powerful and it is so important. It is a pillar for our well-being, health, and relationship health in the way we interact. So uh, definitely was a wake-up call for me. And I'm happy that we are talking about this because if someone listened to us, they can start asking themselves, okay, what, are, what do I need to be more clear about? What are my corners? What are my blind spots? What are they? Because from those blind spots, then most and uh, more traumatic situations might then uh, explode. So Barbara, let's talk about PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. How can a person gain their vision and clarity back when they've been through that? Because I think having gone through trauma like you experienced, you know, the sudden reaction to your life changing so drastically and so painfully you have in a sense experienced it and you you know what i'm talking about and when someone's coming to you with the pain what what do we say and how do we help them achieve clarity mm. well if somebody suffers for, from PTSD, it is important that they approach a, a therapeutic, a psychologist mm -hmm. um, that can help them. And there are processes and there are ways to go through the PTSD. And that's very important because nobody can do it alone. 
-hmm. It doesn't matter if we have PTSD, actually nobody goes through life alone. And especially when we have difficult moments and very intense uh, challenging moments, we do need the support of others. So the first thing I would say is get in touch with an expert and a specialist that can help you with that. When I, somebody that suffers from PTSD approaches me and wants my support, the first thing that you want to give is space. Space to actually express yourself and make the other person feel welcome. Mm -hmm. Then the clarity about what's happened next comes with time because first you need to heal a disconnection, a disconnection that happened. Because when we go through traumatic experiences, one of the reactions that we have to protect ourselves, it is like we disconnect with ourselves and our world in a way so that we don't feel so much the pain, mm -hmm. right? And so, um, first of all, there needs to be a gradual build of trust in life again, before even imagining what's coming next, before speaking about clarity in the way I was talking about, right? So being conscious about the, the, your life, your world, and your future. First, you need to reconnect with yourself and you need to be at peace with reconnecting with yourself without experiencing too much pain and too, the pain and the suffering without it to be too intense. So you experience trauma, trauma disconnects somehow. You, you are dissociated at a certain level because if you connect with yourself again, that's too painful, so you keep distance. And so what needs to be done, first of all, is to build the trust and with compassion and gentleness and care, know that those parts of yourself can reconnect and you can start feeling yourself again. Because at, the, at first, the pain is so strong that you don't want to feel it. And so you detach from that experience. At the beginning, after... And actually, after several years, uh, I couldn't even uh, entertain the thought, for example, of having another relationship with a, a romantic relationship with a person, because romantic relationship for me, it was at the time equal pain, too much pain, too intense, and I couldn't bear that. So I, I dissociated from that. And I wouldn't, that part of my life was kind of frozen in time. Mm -hmm. So I needed, first of all, to earn back a belief and an experience that exposing myself to a romantic relationship was not equal to I'm going to be hurt again. I'm going to go through that painful situation again. So I needed to trust myself, what I was feeling and uh, my life before reconnecting with the world of romantic love. Does it make sense? So first of all is trust in yourself, in the world, that in the future, that is the first thing. That is the first thing. So people who suffer is from PTSD, they, they need to acknowledge that themselves, first of all, for being there and facing this journey. And um, they want to familiarize again and discover again what does it mean to trust. And first of all, to trust myself and then and, and to trust others, the world, my life and my future. In your book, you say that clarity not only sheds light on situations we face, but it enables us to create distinctions in what we see, perceive, feel. So yeah. I'm taking you away now from the ordinary individual into the organization. We have to get there. So how is clarity based on what you wrote in your book? Because I know you work a lot in the organization, coaching and talking about uh, these steps. How is clarity a game changer in the organization? 
I would say that the organization is made of people. So we are back to square one. Organizations are made of people. There are no organizations without people. And so if you have a group of people that have worked on having that <laughs> mental hygiene, emotional hygiene, if you allow me to say that, where really you have that transparency towards the way you think and what you at, at a certain level I don't I don't not everybody needs to be experts on themselves on this but being aware about the way you think the way you act the way you interact having awareness about around yourself and who you are and how you relate to others is paramount is key and that is the clarity that is needed and it is go and it does go back to uh, and, and self-awareness and knowing knowledge about who I am. And you know, given that you were asked about these in, within organization and I work with leaders and I help uh, the, in leadership development, right? And express fully uh, their unique leadership style. Uh, one of the, the key, one of the, the fundamental problems that leaders have today in being affected in this digital economy in this digital age um, one of the three main problems is the fact that the leaders uh, do not know themselves there is a lack of self-awareness and this creates a problem because now the context is too complex and if you are not self-aware, if you don't have clarity around yourself, if you do not have that inner transparency, remember like last time we talked about the metaphor of the watch and how you see through, right? If you don't have knowledge and vision of who you are from the inside out, if you are not self-aware, it becomes very difficult and stressful to be a leader, to leading and to engage with others because you are constantly worried and feeling the discrepancy and the misalignment of me interacting with you. Whereas if I am self-aware, if I am doing the work, the inner work where I know myself as much as I can, and it is enough to start knowing ourselves as much as we can, if I do the work, then I do not react to you, to other people, to the team, because I know how to manage myself. So I am in a position to respond with conscious behaviors, with actions that I am aware of that are not reactions. And so it becomes, again, very important and paramount to start asking, what are my, and in fact, in organization, there is a lot of around blind spots, right? But blind spots, it becomes a, a word and then hides what it is really about. Blind spots are dark corners, <laughs> dark just because there, there is no light there and we cannot see, not because there isn't any judgment on ethical things about me saying dark corners. But blind spots are parts of ourselves that we do not see and therefore that affect in an in an, a way the relationship and the environment the environment we are in in ways that we do not want potentially right so if we shed light on those dark corners if you start to investigate if we are start to look for clarity within ourselves then the way we relate to others is of a different quality of course we can relate to each other. Even what you discussed before about the bullying and the family members, right? Being jealous or blaming or pointing fingers, right? It, it does happen as in a family, it happens in organizations, right? And it has to do with the fact that we do not know enough about how we work it from the inside out. And we do not know enough. We do not have enough knowledge and clarity about how, what can we, learn to be better and, ex and expressing ourselves so that others can relate to us in a different way. So we are not serving our others by not serving ourselves. And so clarity in organizations is extremely important and it goes back to self-awareness and it is too much important right now because, and I repeat myself, the systems on the outside is very complex. It is fast. And so if we have not done the work, it is as if we are we want to run, but we have a lot of baggages that we need to carry with us and we are slower. 
we move in a in a clumsy way instead of being in a flow. Mm -hmm. So it is extremely important clarity everywhere. <laughs> Today is clarity above all. <laughs> Absolutely, I, I love this uh, whole uh, you know the the self awareness. Uh, uh, aspect of it is very important uh, because how you treat yourself and how you think about yourself it's a mirror to the next person it's how I will treat you and I see that and, and the deeper level of consciousness I think that's where it comes in and uh, it is it is telling in a sense of peace around certain individuals and um, well, a sense of peace, not around certain individuals. It is telling, and it always starts with the inside. And uh, thank you for that, Barbara. So let's talk emotional intelligence, the parallels between the two, clarity and emotional intelligence, and how it affects our world, your perspective. Yeah, well, look, emotional intelligence is actually having clarity around how do I work emotionally? Because an intelligence is what allows us to move in the world, making sense of what's going on and knowing the rules and knowing how we move and how, what steps we can take. So when we speak about emotional intelligence is my ability to be aware of my emotions and your emotions and how I can interact uh, in a way so that it is effective and it doesn't hurt you. But together, we, by interacting with you in a certain way, I, I achieve more, not because I want, I have an agenda, but simply I'll, I allow you and me to be in a, in a more, um, in a flow and to be better at communicating, better at interacting. So emotional intelligence is the clarity, is having clarity around who I am emotionally and how I regulate or not myself and how I can uh, express uh, how I manage my emotion and I express them towards you and how I manage you and your emotional reactions or responses. So it is having clarity around my emotional world and having intuition and trying to get some clarity about your emotional world and how we interact with it. Thank you. Thank you, Barbara. That was lovely. And, you know, your video and the little discussion we had before the show started about your time at this retreat and how beautiful it is. That little video clip and a few seconds of it, it's just so calming and so beautiful. And how important is that in all of this, in finding our peace, our clarity, in working on our self-awareness? How important it is for us as human beings to find that place out in nature and just if a person does not have that opportunity to, you know, walk on some grass, if I may say so, mm -hmm. but you're living in a tiny little apartment building, what would you suggest? I mean, we have so many options today. When we switch on the screens, we can watch a screensaver that may be of the ocean just to, just to bring that kind of uh, relief to the mind for mm. just a few seconds. You know, we're encouraging that these days. So what, what do you do as a coach? What kind of advice do you give uh, your clients when they ask you about this kind of thing? You know, I, I am a lover of beauty. Apart from the fact that I am Italian and maybe that plays a role, but I really believe I that so, beauty. Mother, that's, that's it. <laughs> that, yes. I believe that beauty, uh, and in this in this particular moment, I'm referring to aesthetics. So something beautiful that we see outside of us. And that is like you mentioned, the environment of the video that we showed. Actually, I searched and I looked for a beautiful environment to be in that had a very powerful, calming energy, powerful in a sense of positive energy to it. I actually looked for it because I know that that to me, at least for me, it connects me to my most profound inner resources. And so I become creative. I express myself better. 
But as you say, not everyone has a, an Italian lake nearby or has a, in the is in a possibly in the situation where he or she can just go somewhere else, right? Or maybe you are just in your tiny apartment. This is not the place I usually stay and work in, but I look for it. So when this is not possible and you cannot uh, travel somewhere, what is possible then? That's what I say to my mm, clients when they ask me this question, is to there is always beauty, aesthetics beauty, even in what seems to be uh, ugly. And so my invitation and encouragement is to refine our ability to spot what is beautiful. Even if it means that you pay attention to a centimeter, a tiny little portion of a wall, and you start noticing how beautiful it is, the material it is built with. Or even if, if that is, if you, if you don't have a wall or that is, you can't find anything beautiful in it, you just go and, and get one flower and start noticing the perfection and the beauty in that one flower. I think that the majority of us can do that. Or if you are in a very painful situation, and I'm sorry, I need to bring up the war in Ukraine that is going on, probably what there you can do, it's you find the beauty in tears of people, in the transparency of it. It is very painful, of course, but there is beauty in, the, in a face that is courageous and to stand against this um, painful situation. So my suggestion is to refine our ability to look at the smallest things that we have around, objects that we have around, or people that we might be with, and notice something beautiful about them, the people, something beautiful about the objects, and rest in that tiny little bubble of beauty. Because there is power in beauty, and I think that it is uh, um, it connects us really to what is good in life. It is the uh, aesthetic beauty, I think, is a door to the essential beauty that we all have inside. And so by resting in it, just uh, savoring it, not wanting it, not wanting to possess it, but just being exposed to it, and, and trying to stay in that bubble of beauty, if it is a tiny little flower, that still moves us something in us. It kind of recalls the beauty that we are and that we have inside. So I would say so. Thank you, Barbara. So what advice, you know, uh, would you have, for instance, for someone who suffers from anxiety or is prone to feel to feel sad all the time you know people mm -hmm. are struggling with that today it's something like switching on the news or you know just uh, doing mm -hmm. your daily life sometimes for some people it's mm -hmm. it's a struggle and yeah. you know i know that a lot of people should be in therapy and going through uh, that journey but what happens to someone who is not or someone who is but isn't coping and mm. what what advice do you have for that person? Because you've been in a place where you practically worked yourself out of this journey. You had you had your family, you had your radical friends, but none of that would have helped you, Barbara, had you not decided one day I'm getting out of this. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I've done enough of single life. I'm one day going to be someone's person you know you must have done that shit at least so what what do you have to say to someone who is in a similar situation you know life is so different and so diverse everyone's problem is different but it's the same problem essentially because they're feeling feelings of depression they're feeling down they're feeling low and they don't want to do life anymore some people just don't want to do life anymore but they mm. they look like they do so what advice do you have for them that's a very 
beautiful uh, question that you're asking, Michelle, because there are, as you said, so many people and I went through a tough time myself and sometimes it happens to everybody, right? Um, I would say breathe. <laughs> and why I say, why breathe? Because anxiety is when you are projecting yourself too much into the future without yeah. having clarity of what is actually going to happen or without knowing what is going to happen. And so it is a scary place to be in, especially if you are in a moment when maybe you are not fully, um, you are not fully yourself because you are too sad or you are scared. So you don't want to throw your mind too much into the future. So you want to bring it back to the present moment because the present moment is where we are connected to our resources, inner resources, inside and also outside. So you want to bring your mind back to the present, right? And breathing, noticing, feel, noticing really your belly going up and down, feeling the air coming in and out. There, there are amazing experts in breath work. And so if somebody suffers from anxiety and, and uh, I would encourage you to find great people that work on breath and breathing and, and learn to reconnect with breath. And if we, and this is for anxiety. So anxiety and fear is when we project with our mind too much into the future and we somehow forget about our present and we are not connected fully to the present moment where we are actually living and where all our resources are. And the same with depression. Depression and sadness is depression and sadness. You are looking towards the past, and sadness is when you have lost something. You feel the that you have lost someone or something, and that's what sadness is. It tells you that you had that loss, and so if you linger on that loss, then you keep feeling that uh, sadness, and it means again that your mind is not in the present moment. You are not connected to your set and your body and your full resources because you are your mind is too much focused on the past and so it is absent from the present that when you feel that in in the in this case right so breathing reconnect yourself aligns your mind with your heart and with your body and that's when you can find peace that's the only place in time where we can find peace is the present moment and so when we suffer too much, looking at the future, looking at the past, if you notice carefully, you forgot about being in the present. And so you just bring back your mind and reconnect and align. That's why the breath word and meditation is so powerful because it, it keeps you grounded within yourself and in the present where all your resources are. And that's when peace and calm resides not too much in the future not in the present you can you can think about the future and you can be grateful about the past at the past but you do that once you have learned to remain in the presence firmly in the present aligned with your mind your heart your body your soul and everything here and so it is like you are anchored in the present so your mind can go in the future can can imagine and plan and can go to the past and acknowledge and see and be grateful but you know that your life is now that's the only place i we have heard this many many times and still we do not remember it when we are suffering right so maybe another suggestion would be give find a tiny little object that you can bring with you that reminds you of this dynamic right Oh, I, or reminds you, I need to be anchored in the present and be aligned here and there. Let me breathe, <laughs> intent, consciously breathe, conscious breathing, right? So that that's uh, that's I would say that's my my what I would do say. You, do you teach conscious breathing, Barbara? No, I don't teach conscious conscious breathing. I do practice it, and I have read about it. I'm not an expert, but I rely to experts to help me when I do some retreats or when I speak with uh, or when my clients need the work done. So I work with associates, right, that, are, that know what they are doing even better. I know uh, a little bit in, enough to um, direct my clients when they need that. Well, that's, I think it's, uh, it's, it's a beautiful concept and I, I've, I've been doing a bit of reading myself about it. I think it's very important because uh, I have recently discovered we're, we're all not breathing properly. <laughs> we yeah. Have shallow breathing. 
So yeah. the thing is, uh, if someone wanted to pursue, uh, you know, how to breathe better, conscious breathing, where would you suggest they look? Uh, I know a very, um, a very good guy. It is called the breath guy uh, the on breath Instagram. Guy. Yes. And, and, and he's, he's amazing. He's amazing. So I would suggest to start there. And uh, I would also suggest with, depending on the country or in the language you speak and you read, and maybe just simply look for some books and start reading and, and get yeah. some clarity. That's also, again, where clarity <laughs> begins, right? Start to get clarity around topics that you are interested in, you know, now you know that they be good for you. So just start, uh, start uh, reading about it. That's a way that I like to do. Or if you don't like to read, watch a YouTube um, video. There are plenty of videos about these or, or look for a documentary. If you like to listen, look for an, uh, search for an audiobook. Mm -hmm. So something that works for you, but start become cu curious about something that might help you. Barbara, thank you very much. Today's session was just beautiful. And thank you for all that, uh, that advice about the breath guy and all those YouTube videos what we will do is uh you can share links with with us and we will post it on the page on the people absolutely page. barbara thank you very much for coming on board today and it was beautiful and i'm sure you help a few people out there i'm sure you thank do. you so much thank you so much michelle for the great questions that allow me to express what i think and the contribution that hopefully uh, will help somebody out there that is listening. So thank you very oh, much. Thank you.